By now, Ultimate Emerald Dreadnoughts has left behind its early access tag by a good year. It's been in early access since 2019, and that lasted until 2023. It is now 2024. What is the state of this game? Is this a game you should be getting? In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the good, the bad, and the overall opinion that I have on this game. Now, let's start with the good. Ultimate Emerald Dreadnoughts, there really isn't a game like it. This is the only game where you can build your warships, have them fight it out, fight other navies, fight even player design ships, and do it all in an era from 1890 to, let's say, 1950. There is no other game like it. Sure enough, you have From the Depths, you have Naval Art, you have World of Warships. These games all do some parts of what Ultimate Apple Dreadnoughts does, because for example, World of Warships allows you to fight with many different warships. It allows you to fight other players. But there's no designing your own ship. There's no campaign in World of Warships. From the Depths does have a campaign. It does allow you to build your ships, but in a completely different way relative to how Dreadnoughts does it. Naval Art comes close in a sense, but it is a far more detailed designer, which you can spend hours and hours designing just one ship. Whereas Dreadnoughts is a bit more piecemeal and building ships is far easier. So when it comes to naval games, there really isn't any other like it. Speaking of designing your ship, this is where Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts shines. This is definitely one of its major strengths. You'll be able to build a ship exactly how you want it. How fast do you want it to go? If it's a campaign ship, how far do you want it to be able to travel? What do you think the role of the ship should be? And if you have a good answer to that, what sort of weapons should the ship carry to complete that mission? If it's likely to encounter a lot of smaller ships, then maybe in case of a battleship, a hefty secondary battery is going to be required. And you can put on exactly the type of armament that you want. You can make it bigger, smaller, you can make the barrels longer for bigger reach. You can use it as a ship that fires a lot of high explosive and just tries to melt down the enemy. You can use it as an armor-piercing warship that just sinks everything that it encounters. This is entirely up to you as a player, and it does that extremely well. In the extent of that, it also allows you to create your ideal navy as you're playing a campaign. You might want to have a couple of battleships, let's say two to three. And then for each battleship, you have two to three cruisers that escort it. You'll need some destroyers to scout, and maybe light cruisers to hunt down the enemy's destroyers. And you can design all of these ships yourself. You can make sure that they work together in the best sense that you know how. So your battleship might have the biggest guns to take out the enemy battleship. Your cruisers are there to fight other cruisers or potentially lend some support to your battleship, maybe using torpedoes. Your destroyers can be used as either torpedo boats or pure gunboats. Everything is up to you. That is what Dreadnoughts does so well. And when it works, when it all comes together beautifully, it is extremely satisfying to wipe out enemy fleets, just seeing your enemies get cut down by your overwhelming firepower. Especially as you're doing a campaign, you can also refit these ships. So your ships will stay with you as you continue to play, and you can refit ships to make sure that they stay relevant years later. You can improve their armament, you can improve their armor, you can change their engines. You can keep these ships along for the ride, and even older warships can still serve a purpose. So in that sense, it is a very deep game with tons of things to tinker and to learn to get better at. With a ship designer, you can also build some really weird ships. You can try to go for historical ships, or rather the very opposite. You can have relatively small hulls with massive guns on them. And all of these choices are going to impact how the ship is going to do. Because while Dreadnoughts does have a lot of freedom, it also comes with some cost. You can have a massive gun on a smaller ship, but the recoil might be a bit much for that smaller hull to handle. So yes, it gives you a lot of options, and it also gives you, let's say, some downsides to those choices. Thankfully, Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts is also moddable. Mods can make this game a lot better. Mods like the Naval Arms Race or the Dreadnoughts Improvement Project can breathe new life into your campaigns. 
They will change the, the way that the game is played. Some would say that these mods are required, because the vanilla experience can be rather tough. And this brings me on to the bad parts about the game. As I'm speaking about these bad parts, or let's say less optimal parts, this is mostly going to go for the campaign, which is the part of the game that most players will get drawn to. In the campaign, your nation, whichever one you choose, has an economy. But the economy makes relatively little sense. There is a resource called oil, and the game says you should get oil, and then fails to explain what happens if you don't get it. It fails to explain how that impacts your economy. It fails to explain how getting more transports impacts your economy. It fails to explain a lot of these mechanics. And this is one of the major frustrations that I personally have with the game. If I, as a player, don't know how my choices, how my actions are going to impact whatever outcome I want to get, then how am I supposed to steer my nation and my navy in the direction that I want? As a player, you simply don't really get enough feedback from the game in that sense. Something else that happens during campaigns is land wars. One nation is going to go to war with another nation. This might have been partly your choice as the admiral of the nation. However, you're not just the leader of the nation. You're just the admiral, which means that there are going to be land invasions. If nations have land borders, these invasions spawn seemingly randomly. Sometimes during a war, you'll have a land invasion and there is nothing you can do about it. And that is an extremely frustrating part because you cannot do anything about it, but it will massively impact you. The game does have a factor that says army logistics. How is your army getting supported by your warships? And again, it really fails to explain how well these things work together, what you should really be paying attention to. It doesn't give you a, an if then that. It does not give you a formula of what to do. So you might be able to control the Navy. You might, to some extent, be able to control what your nation is going to be doing, but you cannot control land wars. Whereas you might be winning the naval war. If you lose a province, that is going to have a massive impact on the outcome of the war, maybe even causing you to lose the war. I understand what they're trying to do with this mechanic. At least I think I do. They're trying to give you the indication that, hey, you're just the admiral. You're not the leader of the nation. So these things are going to happen outside of your control. As a player of a game, I don't understand that mechanic. Because as a player of a game, I want to have a sense of control. I don't just want to have to, well, let's say roll the dice, in which case I'm not even the one rolling the dice, and just see what happens. That is not the type of game that I'm trying to pursue. Another bad part about the game is that the AI gets massive bonuses to its economy. This means that you might have nations which are incredibly rich. These nations can also then start to build massive amounts of ships. Ships that sometimes you wonder where the AI gets them from. Because they might have the economy, but every nation has to deal with a factor that's called shipbuilding. How many ships can you build at the same time? Realistically, that depends upon your shipyard capabilities, as well as the type of ship that you're trying to build. Your nation might be able to build two battleships, or let's say four cruisers at the same time, maybe ten destroyers. The AI does not seem to have this limitation. And I've seen them be building 20, 30, 40 ships at the same time. And all of a sudden, the AI snaps its digital fingers and spawns in a whole bunch more ships. I understand that it's very difficult to make an AI competitive with a player, yet doing it in such a fashion where you think, ah, I have finally eliminated the navy of the enemy, all to just have them spawn another fleet out of nowhere. That I have found to be a very frustrating mechanic of this game. As for the battles, this is a good part of Dreadnoughts, and it can also be an incredibly frustrating part. Because the formations in Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, 
the way that your ships work together, sail together and fight together can be an absolute disaster. They will suddenly change course. They will try to suddenly change formation. To their credit, the AI does have a button that says avoid torpedoes, so that if you have a larger formation, you don't have to worry about that. Yet, if, for example, the lead ship comes under a torpedo attack and five ships behind it in the formation, 20 kilometers behind it, start panicking, that makes no sense. The start of a battle is also a bit of a mess. Your ships are all trying to jockey for position, and I don't understand this. 17 years ago, another naval game came out called Battle Stations Midway. It had a formation system that you could set up at the start of the game. Where do you want each ship to be? Click play, and you're off to the races. 2024, and Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought still does not have a formation planner, nor do I believe is it getting worked on. So this is one of those things that I just don't understand the game doesn't have, because it would be such a massive quality of life upgrade. I have also found that sometimes ships just refuse to fire, for unknown reasons. Sometimes it is something that's a little weird, where, for example, your ship has eight turrets. Two on the bow, two on the stern. You just gave your ship orders to change course. And as such, the bow turrets had to swing all over the ship in order to get back on target. Fair enough. Then why are my stern turrets waiting to fire for the bow turrets to come all the way around? I don't understand. A ship has eight guns. It has four turrets. Let the stern turrets fire already. It is this level of odd, this level of curious that I simply never have understood about this game. In a similar vein, sometimes ships will refuse to launch their torpedoes without exactly explaining why. A simple tooltip saying ally in the way or out of range or enemy ship not likely to get hit, let's say a low chance to hit. If you would just explain that to me as a player, that would make sense. Then I would understand, aha, now I know what I need to do. I just need to close the distance. I need to get closer to the enemy fleet and then you'll launch. Whereas right now, sometimes they just refuse to. And whereas, for example, World of Warships has this button, launch torpedoes, you just point them in the direction of the target and you click. This game, sadly, does not have that. Earlier, I have also mentioned shared designs. You can share designs with other players, but this is a feature that seems a bit half worked in. Because the game is on Steam, and to some extent you would then expect Steam Workshop support. You build a ship in your game, you save it as a shared design, and you upload it to Steam. Somebody wants to fight your ship? Perfect. Download it from the Steam Workshop. Makes sense, right? That would be the easiest way to go about it. A game like XCOM has tons and tons of things that you can download from the Steam Workshop and easily integrate into your own game. It would be such a perfect match for Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts to also have this, yet it does not have it. Instead, you have to dig up a file, then transfer that to a friend, through Dropbox, Discord, whatever messaging system that you use, and then they have to download it, plug it into the game using a file explorer, and then you can fight the design. It's just a janky system. Now, this brings me to the overall question. Should you get this game? The answer is, it's going to depend. If you're a naval buff, you'll definitely enjoy this game. You can get easily 100 hours of entertainment out of it. You will get annoyed by some of the parts that I've probably mentioned, but overall, the good will outshine the bad. Especially when comparing the game and the game's costs to some other forms of entertainment that you might get going to a cinema or going to a theme park, let's say the entertainment cost per hour is always going to be lower for Dreadnoughts. If you are not so much a naval buff, but more of an occasional player and you're considering getting this game, I would recommend waiting until a sale. Check it out, play the game, and give it a couple of hours. Steam does allow you to, of course, refund the game. But keep in mind that that is limited to a certain amount of hours. And this is kind of where it gets a little tricky. Because I feel that you need 10 to 20 hours into Dreadnoughts to really get a feel for the game, to understand the mechanics, 
to understand how you can build good ships to get your first campaign really nicely underway. And that's why I recommend waiting for a sale. This way you're lowering your risk and if you don't like the game, then at least you haven't spent as much money on it. Personally, I have probably put about 800 hours into the game at this point. I've watched it grow over the last couple of years. I would personally get it. I would personally enjoy it, even if I wasn't making content on this game. Whether that's the case for you, that is going to be solely your decision. I've given you the good, I've given you the bad. Now it's going to be up to you to decide. Hopefully I've been able to contribute to your decision making somewhat. If you have any questions about the game, let me know down below in a comment and I'll see if I can help you answer them. If you do decide to get the game, then please allow yourself some time to learn it because it is deep, it has a learning curve and there will be mechanics that just make you go, huh? In order to help you, there's a tutorial list down below in the description. This playlist is going to help you get started quickly and avoid some of the pitfalls that the game has. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, please hit the like button so more people can find it and also get an informed opinion about Dreadnoughts. And if you have any questions, as I mentioned, put them down below in the comments. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon for more.